what i am showing you guys is a danger zone when it comes to landslides earthquakes tsunamis underwater landslides and mega thrust earthquakes you might recognize kamchatka where we just had the magnitude 8.8 .8 mega thrust earthquakes and are still having aftershocks that are quite significant the earthquakes have triggered volcanoes to pop at least seven probably more are to follow i just released a video about this because there's a lot of mystery on that map also have you heard of the Andrianov Islands and have you heard of a monstrosity of earthquake that happened there magnitude 8.6 we have the Aleutian Islands we have Alaska and in that area guys something's going on that is shocking mysterious and mind-blowing we just had the reports let's start with Alaska before we get back to the volcanoes. Let's start with Alaska that they just discovered a landslide. And you have to think these fjords, they're not densely populated. So sometimes if something happens, you don't recognize that it happened right away. A large landslide has triggered a localized tsunami in Tracy Arm, Alaska. That is the one thing that has just happened. But wait, guys. So this landslide was very, very large. It happened on August 11. It's Southeast Alaska. It has generalized a localized tsunami. These fjords are like bathtubs. And I have reported about areas in the world where this could lead to 100 feet, 150 feet tsunamis for settlements that are in danger. Akernes Mountain, for example, frightening, frightening. Watch this in the end screen. So the Alaska Earthquake Center has reported this. The seismic records that they have found for this area indicate, guys, that there was a large landslide that has involved several tens of millions of cubic meters of material that was sliding into the water in the Tracy Arm Fjord in Southeast Alaska. So we have all seen what happened in Switzerland with the glacier collapse slash mountain collapse, how massive the valley was covered, the village of Blatten was destroyed. So imagine even more rock than that crashes into your bathtub this is a narrow fjord so the water acts like a bathtub it starts getting bigger it slides it hits the wall and then it's getting bigger so this is what happened here in alaska so the alaska earthquake center said the seismic signal was absolutely typical of a major landslide event and it was detected across southern alaska the seismic signals were large enough, you see them here, this is the signal, to be seen widely across southern Alaska stations to confirm a significant landslide in the region about the same time. And the resulting wave, fortunately, was not that dangerous as it could have been. So a preliminary analysis by the AEC estimated the resulting displacement wave at approximately 0.3 meters, 30 centimeters, or one feet in height at broader scales. But after they reported about this, they found eyewitnesses from Harbor Island and Tracy Arm Inlet, and they say that the wave heights in certain locations were substantially larger, larger due to local amplification effects, telling you it hits the bathtub wall and then it gets bigger. So the amplification effects within the fjord slash, slash bathtub. One camper reports they were camping with two others on Harbor Island. You see it here on the map. That's about 72 kilometers, 45 miles south of Juneau, Alaska. And they reported that the surge, the wave reached their campsite that is located roughly 7.6 meters. That is 25 feet above the high tide line. So if that wave has reached them, 
that means the wave was at least that big. The wave has swept away half of their gear, including one boat, they say. Personal items, cooking equipment, and they say it came with a, at a distance of about one inch, that's 2.5 centimeters of reaching their tent. That is scary. So the landslide has been more effective in terms of tsunami than they officially now estimate. A landslide specialist, Dr. Dave Petley, noted that the satellite imagery that they were capturing on August 7th, before the landslide, three days before the event, did not show any scar in the mountains that would look like a fresh landscape in this steep terrain. So the exact source location of that failure has yet to be identified. They're waiting for new satellite pictures. So pending new high resolution imagery or direct field surveys by boat or air. Because Tracy Arm is really a steep sided fjord, glacial retreat is happening there, intense rainfall events and pre-existing slope instability create, of course, favorable conditions for a landslide like this, for large mass movements of events that are capable to create how they call it displacement waves, tsunamis. And that is important, guys, because scientists just found something a little bit further away from that. And guys, I want to tell you something else. Since Etna in Sicily, Italy, is just erupting and showing signs of unrest. This thing is sliding into the sea. It's breaking apart underwater. Many of you don't think that this thing has parts of Etna is underwater, but there is a massive crack. And that is in danger and scientists say it will break off. If that breaks off at once, the beautiful holiday region, that sea is going to see a massive tsunami. Etna is a high danger zone. I put this video in the end screen, guys. You have to see this. But now, I mentioned the other island group at the beginning because here it gets even more mysterious. In Alaska, they know something happened. The mystery is where did it happen? But if something happens underwater, guys, I think this is more mysterious and they just found out about this. A large submarine landslide was discovered in an area that produced the massive magnitude 8.6 Andrianov Islands earthquake epicenter. So now they have discovered that a large submarine landslide was happening there and that could be the explanation for a phenomenon that had scientists scratch their head. So this is a massive submarine landslide structure, we have to say. You see it here on this topographic image. It's basically along the southern slope of the Aleutian Shelf. It's about 16 kilometers, that's 10 miles northwest of the epicenter of the 8.6 magnitude epicenter that happened in 1957. So a multi-agency expedition that was happening this June um, has mapped a huge terrain, more than 6,400 square kilometers, that's 2,500 square miles of previously uncharted seafloor along the Aleutian margin on board a vessel, the office of the Naval Research, Research Vessel, Atlantis, beautiful name. A vessel called Atlantis discovers submarine mysteries. I like this. So the mission was led by the USGS, the United States Geological Survey, um, their Volcano Science Center with participation from the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, 
and the Smithsonian Institution, and there's more, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, and they focused on investigating submarine geohazards and their role, here it comes, in shaping tsunami risks across the Pacific. But that's what these underwater volcanoes do. If you're a subscriber of my channel, gosh, have we discussed Santorini and the tsunami danger, the underwater volcano Colombo. But there are so many more in that area. But here in the Pacific, where we have the Pacific Ring of Fire with all these earthquakes, 90% of the Earth has earthquakes, most of the volcanoes on the Pacific Ring of Fire, such a hazardous area, but in my opinion, one of the most beautiful areas in the world. So now that they have found this landslide that spans over 16 kilometers, that's 10 miles across the southern slope of the Aleutian Shelf, it displays features of a typical rapid slope failure. That's what everyone's worried about at Etna including a scalloped headwall, a chaotic debris zone, and long run-out lobes extending into a deeper basin. So imagine Blatten, if you've seen the videos, how quickly and how massive that came down. This can happen underwater. And it's only 10 miles, 16 kilometers northwest of the epicenter of the magnitude 8.6 earthquake that has struck the Andrianov Islands on March 9th, 1957. And that earthquake, guys, generated a Pacific-wide tsunami. We just had it. That's why I mentioned Kamchatka with the 8.8 .8 megathrust Kamchatka earthquake. Tsunamis reaching all across the Pacific, reaching California, reaching San Diego, Crescent City, Hawaii. The 1956 earthquake has produced run-up heights up to 16 meters, 53 feet. But it's not only the run-up height, guide that, that counts with a tsunami. If you have a more flat going inland area, it's not only the first wave, more water follows and presses the water further inland. If you have a steep cliff, you're better off. We know in Japan in 2011, I think it went as far as 11 kilometers or miles inland in some areas. So now you wonder, well, which area got the 53 feet? Hayana on Kauai. But also then Hilo Bay, they got 12 feet, that's 3.7 meters. It has caused millions of dollars of damage on Hawaii. I mean, Hawaii has its own volcanoes and threats and now that, right? And here it comes, here's the mystery. Previous seismic and tsunami models have struggled to fully explain the unusually high run-ups that they observed in some locations. They didn't know where it's coming from. It was prompting the hypothesis that a submarine landslide might have acted as a secondary tsunami source in addition to the magnitude 8.6 earthquake. It has amplified the wave energy. So they're pretty sure this newly discovered landslide was triggered by the 1957 earthquake. And now that discovery could help resolve these discrepancies. I mean, similar to the 1946 Aleutian tsunami event in which a also landslide slash massive slope failure of Onimak Island generated devastating waves that ended 159 people in Hawaii and destroyed the Scotch Cap Lighthouse in Alaska. So, of course, for now, the exact age of this landslide remains unknown and they will conduct upcoming studies 
with the aim to determine whether it coincided for sure with the 1957 earthquake. And interesting is another vessel, the Alvin, that is a human occupied vehicle. They call, it, call this HOV from the US Navy. It's a deep diving submersible. Whenever we hear submersible guys, maybe you have seen my Titan videos. <laughs> So it is a manned submersible that is capable of reaching depth of over 6,000 meters, 20,000 feet to investigate volcanic flanks, underwater volcanic flanks. Gosh, I would love to see video recordings of that. But they also investigate earthquake ruptures, zones, and deep sea habitats. So the team has already collected 884 scientific samples including biological, geological, and seawater specimens from that area. And they mapped over 2,200 miles off the Aleutian margin. So they will learn with these samples, they will learn a lot more about what has happened there. And they can then give better predictions for other areas, which areas might see a higher tsunami than ex expected. So further studies want to learn the precise age of the landslide, the volume and the potential tsunami generating capacity, but also newly mapped volcanic landslides in the Aleutian Arc. So the researchers say it is so important that we do modern seafloor mapping with modern technology such as multi-beam backspatter sonar in revealing these hidden geological hazards so that a tsunami doesn't come as a surprise all of a sudden. Important for Alaska, Hawaii and the broader Pacific region. And I mentioned Kamchatka. The aftershocks are still happening and there's one island that has four and a half volcanoes on it and in the past, in the 1800s, there was a mystery, how can I say, volcanic winter, that they knew there was a volcanic winter, but they did not know where the heck was that coming from. It was a huge mystery until December 2024. This is how long it took them. They found the culprit a monstrosity of a volcano that had erupted, wrecking global havoc. And guess what? This is right there where we have the aftershocks, where we have all these earthquakes, where we have one after the other volcanoes popping from these events. Check out the end screen, guys. But there's so much in the end screen, you can only click one. So I would suggest, very important, guys, subscribe, I want to see you again, then go to my channel start page, go on videos, click on recent, and then you see all of them. And then just binge watch them. I don't want to say goodbye to you because I want to see you when you click here in the next video. And if you want to support the channel, you just have to scroll down. There's a link to my buymeacoffee.com slash silky site, or, and you click the join button for behind the scenes video. And uh, yeah, I see you somewhere, hopefully, don't go away, somewhere else.